So we need a few ingredients to make this one work. We're gonna start with a rectangle. Sop, you guessed it. We're gonna go ahead and attach a null here. We'll scoot that way over the right, so we've got plenty of room to work. Let's go ahead and display that. We'll use the H key to home. We can see that our rectangle sure does show up, just like we hope that it might. And, you know, a rectangle, that's, that's interesting. All right. Let's also add a line. Stop. Okay, so a line that gets us uh, going here someplace. Now, I want to make this a little bit longer, and what we do with our line, in fact, if we connect it here instead, we'll be able to maybe see it. You can kind of just barely see it show up right here. It's this little tiny gray bit, right? If we like scoot around some of these parameters, we'd see it move. And we're not seeing too much with that. That's okay. And what I want to do is I want to set this to start at negative 15, and I want this to go all the way to 15. It's right there along the x-axis, so it's real hard for us to see, but we know that it is, in fact, showing up there. So that's great. The next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add a sweep. Stop. Now, what I want to do is I want to plug my rectangle into my topmost input. I want to plug my line into my second input. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach my sweep down here. Okay, well, yeah, that's, that seems kind of lame. <laughs> it's just two rectangles. Gee, oh, it's a lot of work for not very much sexy stuff so far. Well, what we can do is we can start to turn up the number of points. Right, and as we crank this up, we're going to get more and more of these things in line. Now you're going to say, well, that looks distinctly like the copy sop, Matt. What on earth is going on? Why is there, you know, more than one operator that seems to do the same thing? And I'm going to tell you, whoa there, Tiger. There's still more to do. Cool your jets. So let's take a look at our sweep. And this time, let's start to play with maybe something like our twist parameter. So here we can begin to see how we're twisting these things. Like, that's that's pretty fun. We don't need to do too much there, right? We can actually probably work in a relatively small uh, set of dimensions to get some interesting kind of twist that's going on. Now, you might imagine that if we did this, we could do something like insert, say, a skin. All right, so we could skin this in line. And you're going to say, well, that's nice, but it's not as nice as it could be. And I'm going to say, you're right, because we could add an attribute create in here, and we could compute our normals. And now we've got kind of a twisty situation that is real fun, right? It's got this tubular kind of feel to it. And you might say, well, that's great, but it feels awfully flat. Well, all right, all right, Snarky, I see. See what you got there. Let's instead insert a facet. So we're going to stick our facet here in line, and in this case, we're going to say unique points, and we're going to compute normals. Mm, that's still maybe not quite what we're after, but it's still interesting, right? So there are lots of ways that we can start to play with this a little bit and get interesting kinds of looks that might show up out of this. Now we can see in our skin that we could also do something like output polygons, right? We could do all sorts of fun, uh, kind of playful things that come out of this. And in fact, let's actually get rid of this skin. Let's go back to our sweep and let's take a look at some things that we, we missed, right? Like, again, part of the trick here, right, is that I'm, I'm exposing the fact that it's easy to kind of fall into operators that we already know and what, you know, oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 this and this and this. And. Well, sometimes what we need to do is we need to take some time to actually pull apart the operator that we're working with and better understand what's going on with it. So let's actually go to our output page and let's look at, oh, we just fast sweep. Uh, well, we could, oh, look at that. We could skin this thing right here. We could skin and auto close. You know, what does that do? I don't know, uh, but it does something, right? So. <laughs> Often our operators have lots of things uh, that are associated with them that we can actually take advantage of and pull apart. And one of the best things to do is to hit that little help button. And with that little help button, you'll get a little web page 
that will actually tell you, well, what do those particular parameters do? What do they actually uh, change, right? So this is a part of how we begin to read the documentation and rely on the documentation, is we take advantage of the fact that there's some little buttons that kind of help us along the way understand what it is that we're up to. Okay, enough of that kind of like jibber-jabber from me. I want us to look at one other thing that we might do here that can make this a little more interesting and exciting. So we've already got a kind of line that's set up here, um, but what if we don't want it to just have this kind of straight line shape? Like what if I wanted to have a kind of curvy shape to it? You know, that's we could maybe do this. All right, this is something that you don't see too often, but we could right click, we could model geometry. Uh, we're going to get a little geometry viewer here. Uh, we'd have to do something like come up here uh, to select and transform. Then we could select a point that we'd want to transform. We could click on the point, right? We can get a transformation handle. We could, you know, scoot that up. Okay, right. We could start to model our geometry this way. And depending on how patient we were, uh, we might kind of we could do all sorts of really interesting things with this. Uh, in general, I would say that touch is probably not the place that you want to do too much of your modeling um, because it's not really an environment that's necessarily intended for you to do lots of modeling inside of it. There are many other applications where you can do more complex modeling. Uh, and Touch is actually built to import FBX files, OBJ files. There's lots of ways to kind of ingest these things. So it's not necessarily worth doing it that way, in my opinion, right? Like, I'm just one person, you don't have to listen to me. But that would be, those would be my druthers. I think it's more interesting to think about the kinds of procedural things that we might do here. So, for example, we might add a pattern chop. Uh, and if we add our pattern chop in here, we can see that we've got this nice kind of juicy sine curve shape to it. Okay, that's interesting. And I'm just going to start to play with how this thing looks a little bit. So it's, you know, 100 long. Let's say that it's, you know, got five cycles here. That's starting to look interesting. We're going to scoot this over here just a little bit, a little bit further. Now, well, you know, let's just, let's keep working, we'll kind of work back to some of the changes we have to make. We're going to insert in line here a chop two sop. And that doesn't seem to have done anything just yet. Hmm. Trixie. We're going to grab this pattern chop. We're going to drag it right into the chop field. Now we have okay, still nothing's going on. I'm going to get rid of these attribute scopes for just one moment. And what I want to describe is I want to tell this operator how I want to use this shape. So in this case, I want channel scope. That's referring to the channel names. I want to use chan1, right? And I would like chan1 to change p1. And in this case, we can kind of, if we were to, let's do, mm, let's do this. Let's do our chop2. Let's use our help menu, because our help menu is our friend. We'll bring this up over here, and we can, you know, might look at this and say, "All right, well, you know, what's going on here? Chop, channel, channel scope, the names uh, to modify the attributes." Oh, oh, there's a list of attributes. Okay, so we might look at our list of attributes, and we can see that there's there's all sorts of attributes that might be associated with this thing. Okay, so there's these point things. Wait, let's go back. And we could see that, you know, we were going pretty quickly, and we missed right here. There's this attribute scope right here that helps us understand what's going on. So P. P is a point position expressed as X, Y, Z. Hmm. Okay. Well, that, under that kind of explains this part, but where does this part come from? Let's add a SOP2 dat. So we'll add a SOP to dat, we'll drag our line onto our SOP2. Now what this does is it converts this uh, geometry information into a dat, right, into table information. And here we can see, this is a lovely way to kind of be able to cheat 
a little bit and see how our attributes, right, P0, P1, P2, right, and if we remember back to that documentation, let's bring it up one more time, right, let's bring it back over here. If we look at this, whoops, clicked on the wrong one on our chop two, we can see, right, let's come down here, so P point position expressed as X, Y, Z. Well, in, in, you know, kind of in computation land, when we're thinking as uh, a program, right, because we're going to be thinking like a programmer an awful lot when we're working in this environment, we're going to have a, a tuple, and if we have a, let's just add a text stat so we can write this down. We might have a tuple that is expressed, right, in parentheses, x, y, z. I need another comma in here. And actually what we've got is we have something in a 0, 1, 2 position inside of this tuple, right? So this is, this actually holds three pieces of information, right? Like any point in 3D space has got an x, y, z location. And we think of those attributes existing in that space. X, Y, Z, which also corresponds to their kind of list position or tuple position, 0, 1, 2. So what, what did I do? So what I described over here in this chop 2 was I said that I would like Chan 1 from this chop to be a descriptor of what happens in the Y dimension, right? So this is describing what happens in Y for this line. Which is why, when we look at this, we've now got this beautiful kind of wavy shape that we end up with, right? That's, that's what that's all about. Whew. I know that's kind of a long way around to get us there, but I promise that's, you know, that's a part of what we have to do here is pull apart some of the things that go into this. Okay, so I made that a little bit shorter, so we've got this more kind of compact shape to it, right? So... Here, we, as we change the kind of attributes of our line, that's also influencing what's showing up here and how this is being expressed. Let's go back for just one moment to our pattern. Now, I'm not done with this pattern stop yet. Let's turn its um, amplitude up to 5. Okay, so whew, that's much taller. I like that. That's getting much better here. Let's actually come over here in our taper. Let's go uh, just from zero, from one to one. Let's say we want to go from one to zero, right? Now we've got a nice little shape to that a little bit. Let's play with our decay rate, right? So we can kind of play with how that rolls off. Maybe we want it to kind of have a shape to what goes on there just a little bit, right? And let's come over our chop two now. There's there's some interesting things happening here so far. Right, so at this point, if I want to keep these two things kind of connected together, well, oh, interesting, this has got 50 points, but this has got 100, but this has got 50, and if I look at this chop two, I get one sample for each point. I could resample my chopped if it might. What if I just wanted to have the same number of points in my geometry as I have in my channel operator? Well, let's go ahead and write a little expression to do that. So I'm going to look at the operator pattern one, and let's expose this so we can see a little bit better. And I want the num samples. Oops, did I write that? Oh, pattern one, excuse me. There we go. So now what I've kind of handily done is I've set this up so that as I change my pattern sop, pattern chop, excuse me, that attribute, or those uh, attributes kind of push right on over here to what happens inside of my line sop, right? That's a, a slick way to be able to build in some of those things, kind of thinking ahead of time, so that you end up with something that kind of builds itself and continues to modify itself. It's especially useful as we're kind of playing. Right, we might come back to our sweep. We might decide that we want to play with the scale of this thing. We might want to add some roll to it, right? So we've already got a little bit of twist, but we could add some roll. 
right? There's all sorts of things that we can kind of kind of continue to kind of manipulate and end up with something kind of funky and weird that we might want to render later on, right? Especially if we think about like, all right, well, where would a camera sit? How would we navigate this? What kind of weird structure might this turn into? And we might even come back and say, actually, you know what? I do, in fact, want to sweep this thing. Oh, weird, right? Now I've got this kind of bizarro kind of geometry. That would be really interesting to, to render in some way. Okay, so that's a quick tour of what a bunch of SOPs might look like. And what we're going to do next is we're going to look at uh, rendering and what goes on in real-time rendering. See you in one hot flash.